Thanks for joining us for another episode on Fully Charged Plus. This week is slightly different as we're trailing a new episode format. So stay tuned to hear me speaking with Charlie Jardine from EO Charging, one of the UK's leading companies for smart fleet charging. And we really hope you enjoy this episode. So, Charlie, it's really nice to meet you. And what's really nice good, me. really good about what you do is, I love that you're a you're an entrepreneur who started a business in a barn. That is so. It's either got to be a garage or a barn. That is really. Yeah. Good. Is that really the case? It was actually a pig shed. A pig so, shed is even better. Yeah. So it's on my grandpa's farm. Um, decided to start a business and moved back home to my parents. Right. And uh, yeah, my grandpa gave me a an old pig shed, which we converted into our factory. Wow. So initially the, the charges you're making were I'm assuming not rapid charges not high power no, charges no, no. they no, were no. for car parts and uh, so for fleets so, so we focus on fleet so that means charging vans trucks and buses and depots right, right. so um, we've got our own AC charging station we've got our own software platform and then we work with DC charging partners like ABB and um, whoever else but they're all connected to our platform and our proposition is we go out to fleets um, biggest customer being Amazon, right. and we go and install our charging points in their depots, and we do grid upgrades. They then use our software platform um, to basically monitor and manage their infrastructure. Right, that is amazing, because this is a really huge new sector, really, isn't it? Because, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think the general public are aware of the public charging infrastructure is in car parks, yeah. or motorway services, all that kind of stuff, but not we don't think about fleets. But mm. you're now seeing, I mean, I see it every day, loads of delivery vans that are electric, so they've yeah. got to be charged somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So all those Amazon Prime vehicles you see in the UK, Ireland, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, go back to charging stations that we manage. Right. Um, and as you said, you know, fleet vehicles technically are about 50% of, 59% of vehicles on the road. So that's company vehicles, might be cars, might be vans, might be trucks. Right. So fleet is the majority. Um, but as, as you're starting to see now, parcel companies, food companies, so supermarkets, yeah. um, people, companies like Uber or the bus operators, they're all transitioning their fleets to electric. And of course that requires charging stations in the depots. Because then presumably, so I'm just trying to imagine the scale of it, because yeah. if you've got a really big Amazon warehouse thing, mm. and, and I don't know how many vans, but a lot, yeah. then the potential demand on that on their grid connection is going to be Correct. chunky. Yeah. So, and that's, is that what your software does? It manages Absolutely. that? Right. Yeah, yeah. So we're now doing uh, installations where you have 200 uh, AC charging stations. Wow. You have vans going to deliver parcels or food during the day come back to a charger, they plug in, and then our software and technology does a couple of things. Um, one is it looks at, as you said, uh, the site, the power supply, how much power is the building currently using when you've got parcel packing machinery turned on, right. obviously a lot. Um, when it's turned off, there's more power available. And so we're looking at how much power is currently available and taking what's available to send to the charging stations. Right. So you've got this thing called load management, um, and then separately, as a, uh, a depot or fleet manager, I'm now, you know, I've got this electric fleet, which is very different to my petrol or diesel yeah. fleet. And one of my biggest concerns is around, you know, are my vehicles all plugged in? Right. Are they charging and are they going to be ready by the morning? So you get this monitoring software and then other bits within the platform, like scheduling when to charge the vehicles, right. which, yeah. Energy is cheap at midnight and expensive at 5 p.m. Yes. So, and, uh, and I'm just sort of imagining, so, uh, let's stick with Amazon for the time being, mm. a company like that, they're not actually delivering in the middle of the night, but they're probably yeah. packing and sorting stuff. I mean, I would imagine those huge fulfillment centers are not, they don't close down at five o'clock. No, no, they're still I mean, going. it's basically 24 seven. Right. Um, so the vans or trucks are going to deliver stuff during the day, come back at five, six p.m., plug in, uh, charge up overnight, and then get picked up in the morning and go and deliver again. Right. So the, one of the important things is, you know, as you alluded to, if these vehicles are plugged in overnight, they need, uh, <laughs> the, the, the chargers need to work. Yeah. So we offer 24 seven support, 365. And if something doesn't work, we try and fix it remotely in the platform. Right. And if we can't, then we dispatch an engineer to site within an hour and a half. But then presumably you've got this, the slight of more simplicity of it. it's not like each individual driver has to plug in and then find his debit card to mm -mm. it's like it would be done automatically with, yeah. the, with those vehicles yeah yeah so they, they plug in we've got an integration into the vehicle's telematics so the vehicle comes back in plugs into the charging station our platform talks to the telematics platform and says 
who are you? Right. It says I'm vehicle one, two, three. What's the state of charge of your battery? 30%. What time do you need to leave tomorrow? Right. Seven o'clock and travel 80 miles. And so we then know how much juice each vehicle needs over what time period. Right. And then we can schedule when we charge the vehicle fleet. That is, that's incredible. Yeah. So that is really, because it's so different to, and it's, you've got so much more control in a sense over an yeah. individual person with their own private vehicle. I mean, it's a much easier, in a sense, an easier thing to manage on that big scale. I'm sure the software yeah. needs to be complicated and, and work reliably, but that, it's yeah. a very different proposition, isn't it? It's not yeah, something yeah. I thought about. No, I mean, you know, um, electrification of public transport as well. You've got now buses driving around London or yeah. other cities, they're all electric. Slightly different in that sense because they go back to um, charging stations, which are typically DC, so right. high power chargers yeah. because they're very big vehicles with big batteries. Um, and so, you know, the other the other challenges with that, as opposed to home charging or public charging, is trying to get enough power to these sites. Yeah. So it's very much an infrastructure challenge. You know, the charger is actually just one part of the whole jigsaw. Yeah. Um, getting the infrastructure in, using the software to manage when the vehicles charge trying to influence price, that, that, that's really important. Right. So it's very much a, an end-to-end -end service. Yeah, and I mean, because that must be, I don't, can't imagine the scale of that, because that's got to be the thing. Once yeah. there's a lot of buses, and we've done a show about mm. the buses in Shenzhen, where there's, I don't know what it was, thousands yeah, of them. Thousands, yeah, yeah. And to be able to charge them, uh, you know, it's, it's quite a logistical yeah. operation. So, yeah, I mean, we're you know, looking at depots now, we've got 200 plus electric buses. Wow. And right. so obviously from a space point of view, these things are you know, now electric and you have to introduce charging stations into the depot. You might have pantograph systems. Right. So you've seen them. So they yes. charge the buses from over the top. So it, it's very much like an, a, an engineering challenge to fit these vehicles and the infrastructure into the same space that was previously uh, petrol or diesel. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's, uh, we think it's really exciting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's less sexy than public or home, but the fleet bit is, is, is certainly one that's growing. Really, quickly. really important. Now, what about things like Uber cars? So there's been a lot of talk about, you yeah. know, the fact that Uber are going to completely electrify their whole fleet. Do, do you, if, so, and that is, they're the most likely to charge away from a, a, a base, as it yeah. were, aren't they? Yeah. The most likely to use public charging. But is, is there software that can manage that use is that something you're yeah i mean working so on? we're one of uber's uk partners so we do home charging right so when those fleet vehicles go back to drivers homes then there's a charger on their driveway right um what we don't do is public charging so if you've got you know if you are an uber driver you'll need public charging cards or yeah. an app or whatever right. it might be um but ours is fleet so return to depot or return to home right but it's still fleet because it's a business vehicle yeah 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 so Charlie, what makes your product so, so different what, and why is it suitable for fleets? Yeah, so um, the, the fleet product is called the EO Genius. You have a, what we call a dumb charging station, so it's just a plug. Right. Goes up to 22 kilowatt. Um, and then you have this separate product called the EO Hub. So the hub is a mini computer, it's like the brain. And one brain can connect up to 32 dumb charging stations. Right. So rather than put the brain inside every charger and make it smart and therefore expensive, we took the brain out of the box, made the box really simple and cost effective, and you get one brain for the 32 plugs. So you get right. massive economies of scale, which when we start fitting you know, 200 charging points in a single depot, yeah. cost is really important. And then separately, the way the hub gets installed is by the incoming power supply. So again, if you've got two, mm -hmm. 200 vehicles coming back at 5, 6 p.m., all plugging in at the same time, that's a huge amount of power. Yeah. So the hub looks at the building, looks at how much power is being used, and then it will take what's available and send it to the charging stations. Right. So when you're running this, this scale of operation, I mean, what lessons have you learned that other fleet operators can benefit from? Mm. There, there, there's a few challenges. So obviously, as a fleet manager, if I'm being told by my boss uh, to electrify my fleet, the first challenge is around the vehicle. So is there a vehicle that's suitable for my needs? Mm. So I think clearly, you know, there's lots of EVs on the road now, probably less vans and trucks than cars. Yeah. But you know, what, finding out what is the most suitable vehicle for my application, that's a challenge. Less interesting to us. What's, what, what we deal with is once a fleet has decided that we are gonna go electric, we found a vehicle that's suitable for our needs, the next challenge is getting the infrastructure in. 
So in the fleet scenario, whether it's vans, trucks or buses, again, getting power to site is a big challenge. So what we do is we work with the businesses and we look at how many miles a day do these vehicles travel? When they come back to site, how long do they park up for? Doing that, we understand how much energy they need. If we know that, and then we look at the site and we understand how much power is available and how is power currently being used, we can work out if you've got enough to do the job. Right. And if you haven't, we'll go and upgrade the grid. And so I think, um, to answer your question, you know, the biggest challenge that we see for fleet managers outside of the vehicles is just getting the infrastructure in. Yeah. And that's what we deal with. So you know, we are a product and technology business. We make the charging stations, we make the software, but we do this turnkey solution. So helping these fleets electrify by also installing the equipment, doing the grid upgrade, and then once the equipment's in the ground, monitoring it 24-7, 365, and when something goes wrong, we try and fix it. And if we can't, we send a guy to site within an hour and a half. Right. So it's a full, full, full solution, which I think ultimately, if you're trying to do electrification at scale, it's really important that the infrastructure works, obviously. Yeah. And I mean, because you've had some experience now, I mean, generally speaking, I would assume this is a fairly robust system because the, yeah. those charges, are, you know, it's when you get complicated smart charges that they can yeah. go a bit iffy. Yeah. Yeah. But if you've got a dumb box on the wall, you just plug it in, it'll Correct. just going to do Correct. what it does. I mean, the, the charge is still smart because the hub is making it connected. Yeah. But as you say, you know, ultimately, it's a dumb plug. And the way it's been designed is that anyone can take it off and put another one on. Right. So we work with our customers, typically hold product on site. So if there is an issue that we can't fix online, actually just swapping out the charger takes 60 seconds. Right, right. But as you say, you know, reliability is the most important factor for yeah. fleets. Now, the one thing I'm fascinated in, in really, which is next generation, I'm guessing, is the, the, the notion of vehicle to grid or vehicle to factory yeah. or vehicle to you know, packaging center. And, it, and it's really hard to know, and I'm just interested to know your take on that because, mm. you know, at the moment your job is to make sure that car, van, bus is ready in the morning to do the job it needs to be yeah. done. So you're not yeah. really worrying about anything else. But can you see in the long term that it might be possible for when you've got a fleet of three, four hundred vehicles that you could take a kilowatt hour from each of them and sell it when electricity is expensive? Correct. So, so we think vehicle to grid in a fleet environment is, is really suitable. Right. Because you, you said it earlier, you know, you've got, you've got a known load and a yeah. known energy requirement. So if these vehicles do the same trip each day, come back to the depot and park up for the same amount of time, you know how much energy they need. And also, you know how much energy they might have spare. Right. And so for us, you know, whilst we're not doing vehicle to grid, grid in that kind of application now, um, it, it's part of our R&D project. Right. But yeah, as you alluded to, you know, V2G, using the fleet to power the building, send power back into the grid is absolutely something that's going to happen. And then before that, you've got things like V1G, which simply is just turning the charging stations on, off, up or down when the grid, the local grid has got high pressure. Right. And all of these things, the point of doing them really is, 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 is money. So yeah. you, know, you can get paid for doing V1G or V2G. And of course, with an electric fleet, the difference is you've got this amazing opportunity to reduce fueling price so significantly. Yeah. And that's, that's clearly different to petrol and diesel. Because that must be, I mean, that is the, must be a big impact when people work out. And this is what fleets mm. drive, isn't it? They go, so we've got to buy all these vehicles. They cost this much. And then we're yeah. going to fuel them. Oh, hang on. That fuel is a lot cheaper than the diesel we used yeah. to buy for the vans. I mean, are they seeing actual financial savings from running electric fleets? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, there's, there's some numbers around um, kind of parity between ICE and EV, and we're not quite there yet. Right. Just on, on the capital and that, cost. And that's the, the terms of the capital cost. Correct. Yeah. But yeah. then what you do is you look at the, the TCO, so the yeah. total cost of ownership. And if you model that forward, and fleets typically own vehicles for five, seven plus years, actually, with the cost of refueling being cheap, the, the TCO is actually much more compelling than mm. petrol and diesel in a lot of cases. So this is really exciting, Charlie. I mean, where do you see things going in the future? I mean, you're, are you looking forward to lots of, lots of new yeah. things? I mean, look, we've, we've been doing this for six years. Um, we've got to the point now where we've got, you know, we've sold 45,000 charging stations wow. to, oh, I see. Oh, my to, yeah, to 30 countries. Right. Um, most of our business is UK, Ireland and Norway. 
We're now deploying people on the ground across Germany, France, Italy, and Spain. Wow. Um, we're we're you know, looking to grow significantly this year into America, Australia, expanding the Nordics. So yeah, for us, we spent the last six years building the foundations of a business. Right. Um, you know, with, with increased investment, we'll, uh, we'll look to grow. And obviously, you know, it's a, a, a pretty exciting market. And we feel we're just at the start of our journey. Yeah. Thanks again to Charlie from EO Charging for this fascinating episode. All the details and links are in the description below. Please do like and subscribe and tune in again for more episodes here on Fully Charged Plus. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.